Section 1.5, Intermediate Algebra, Formulas, Models, and Geometry. A formula is an equation that uses letters to represent a relationship between two or more quantities. And there are times when we're given a formula that we need to solve it for a specific variable, depending on the application. In this first example, we have both variables on one side of the equation, and they're asking us to isolate or solve for 5. This really isn't any different than what we've been doing solving equations so far in this course. We identify what's happening to the variable. It's being increased by 6x, so we will subtract a 6x from each side. They cancel out on the left, leaving a 3y, and we have minus 6x plus 5 on the right hand side. You may have been thinking 5 minus 6x, either one of those would be acceptable. The last step to get y completely by itself is to undo the multiplication by 3. So divide by 3 on the left, and to maintain equality, the right side needs to be divided by 3. The 3's cancel out, and we would have an answer of the quantity minus 6x plus 5 all over 3. Another way that we could have done this, let me set this up again. Instead of dividing both sides by 3 to maintain equality, we also can maintain equality by dividing every term by the same number. So instead of both sides, I'm dividing every term, which allows me to simplify at least this first term easier. Minus 6 divided by 3 leaves us with a minus 2x. 5 thirds isn't a nice fraction, it's a repeating fraction, so we'll leave it as 5 thirds. And there may be times down the road, particularly when we're working with linear equations, that this might be a strategy that would be preferred over leaving it as the combined fraction. This next example comes from geometry. This is the formula for the volume of a rectangular solid where you take the length times the width times the height. There may be times when you know you need a specified volume, you know what your length and width are, but what would that height or whatever the dimension is, what would it need to be to guarantee the specific volume that is needed? So in this problem, they're asking to solve for h. We play the detective game. What's happening to h in this equation? It's being multiplied to counter a multiplication. We'll divide. On one hand, these problems are a little intimidating because of all the letters, but the bonus is there's not a lot we can do to simplify these. Until we know values for the variables, we're just simply going to leave b divided by lw as just that. On the right-hand side, the lw over lw cancel out, leaving h. The next problem I want to take a look at is this one. This is actually from geometry as well. It's the area of a trapezoid, and they're asking us to solve for b. In your order of operations, inside the parentheses is the first thing that we do, but when we're solving, it will be the last thing that we do. We essentially are working backwards through the order of operations. So I need to get rid of this fraction, and it's your choice. We can multiply both sides by 2 to get rid of the fraction, at least the denominator, or we could multiply both sides by the reciprocal of this fraction and eliminate the h over 2 all in one shot. So your choice, I'm going to take care of it in one step. So I'm going to multiply the left by the reciprocal of h over 2 and the right side by the reciprocal of that fraction in the original equation. 2 over h times a, and a would have a denominator of 1. We will have a 2a when we multiply the numerators over h on the left. The 2 in the numerator cancels out the 2 in the denominator as 
the same with the h in the numerator and denominator, leaving us with 1 times capital B plus B, or just B plus lowercase b. And our goal is to get B by itself, so to get rid of the capital B, we'll subtract. And what we do to one side, we'll do to the other. So sliding over what we previously had on the left and subtracting a B from it, we have a final answer taking this original equation and solving it for the lowercase b. This formula may look familiar to you. It's telling us direction-wise, solve for c, and then convert 25 degrees Fahrenheit, and they're giving us this formula. This formula is taking a temperature, and I do see a typo in here, it should be 9 fifths times c plus 32. It's asking us to solve for C. When we look at C, it's being increased by 32. We will subtract 32 from each side. Can't do much as far as simplifying on the left. On the right, we still have our 9 fifths C fraction, and the 32s are gone. In this, the last thing is to get rid of what c is being multiplied by. We could divide by a fraction, but we'll end up with a fraction in the denominator, or a complex fraction. Doesn't sound very good. Instead, use that strategy that we just did in the last example. To get rid of a fraction, we can eliminate it by multiplying by its reciprocal. The reciprocal of 9 fifths would be 5 ninths. To maintain equality, both sides need to be multiplied by 5 ninths. Left hand side I'm going to leave alone. And on the right hand side, we have reciprocals multiplied together, a fraction and its reciprocal, so that they cancel out leaving one. C. What this has done is transformed our equation that originally, if you had a Celsius temperature, you put it here on the right hand side and got an equivalent Fahrenheit temperature. Now what we've done is, given a Fahrenheit temperature, we'll put it into the formula and have an equivalent Celsius temperature. And that's the second part of this problem, is convert 25 degrees Fahrenheit. So we'll take our 5 ninths replace F with 25, and simplify the problem. 25 minus 32, our first priority because of the parentheses. We'll subtract, leaving us with a negative 7. And the last thing would be to multiply our fraction times the quantity inside the parentheses. If we round this to the nearest tenth, we end up with a negative 3.9 degrees Celsius would be equivalent to the 32 degrees that is equal to the 25 degrees that it was originally given. An application of solving for a variable from the medical world is the following problem. Some doctors use the formula ND is equal to 1.1 T to relate N, the number of appointments scheduled in one day, D, the duration of each appointment, and T, the total number of minutes the doctor can use to see patients in one day. So we have N times D is equal to 1.1 times T. Solve the formula for D. And then use the results to find the duration of each appointment if the doctor has six hours available for appointments and must see 25 patients per day. Well, we'll worry about the tail end of that. Let's do the first part. Solve the formula for D. So here's our formula. N is the number of appointments scheduled times D. The duration of each appointment is equal to 1.1, some standard number, times t, the total number of minutes in the doctors, with the doctor. Understanding the formula really isn't essential for solving this problem particularly. 
that's what we are interested in, is just simply solving for d, and the only thing happening to d is it's being multiplied by n. So we will divide the left by n to maintain equality. We'll multiply the right by n. n divided by n is 1. 1 times d is d. And d is equal to 1.1 times t over n. We've just transformed this for a single variable. And now let's look at the information that they're giving us and do the second half of this problem. Use this result to find the duration, so that's why we solve for D, for each appointment if the doctor has six hours available, and that would be the total number of minutes that the doctor has to see patients in one day. So if they're giving us a time of six hours, and they're also giving us the number of patients per day. And it's telling us 25 patients today, and that is n, the number of appointments scheduled in one day. So they're giving us n is equal to 25. Thing that we have to be careful with when we work with formulas is that we're sure that we have the terms in the units as described for the formula. And if you look closely at time, we identified it as six hours here, but in the original information, t, the total number of minutes the doctor can use to see patients. So if the total time is six hours, we need to transform that into minutes. And to do that, I'm going to change my equals into a multiplication. I want to get rid of hours, so I'll put hours in the denominator and multiply it by 60 minutes as a conversion fraction, 60 minutes over one hour, these are equivalent values, that will transform our hours into minutes. And when we multiply six times 60, we end up with, I'm gonna write it up here, 360 minutes for total time to see the patients. Now we're set and ready to find how long the doctor will be able to spend with each patient 1.1 times our t in minutes, which is 360 minutes, divided by n, the number of patients. There were 25 patients given. We'll multiply and divide. And the result is a 15.84 minutes per patient would be the amount of time.